Now you have a session here at OSCON that explores the, the connections between our perceptual strengths and data visualizations. Mm -hmm. What are our perceptual strengths and weaknesses? So um, obviously to get to the full story, you kind of need the, uh, the full talk, but you know, very briefly, we're, there's some things we're very, very good at perceiving. So like, for example, position is something we're pretty good at accurately judging relative positions. Mm -hmm. Um, and then you know, we're pretty good at lengths, it's not quite as easy, and then things like comparing colors and shapes and sizes we're even worse at. So when you've got kind of a visualization problem, if you want to you know, create a, a, a visualization that's easy to perceive, easy to read, then you generally want to map the most important things in the data to the things that are easiest to see. Is there a certain type of visualization that's just inherently easier to understand? I don't think so. I mean, there's obviously visualizations that are more complex or less complex. Mm -hmm. I mean, my, my feeling is generally, I mean, so I think that there's really two classes of visualizations. So exploratory visualizations, which are for you as an analyst when you're exploring the data. And, you know, often those are pretty free form. Most of them just end up in the trash. Um, but when you, and so you want to be able to iterate those as quickly as possible. When you start to present your results, um, the style of graphics changes a little bit because now you're really thinking about how can I make this as easy as possible for other people to understand. And generally, you know, the way to do that is to make them as simple as possible, which mm -hmm. is not exactly an amazing insight. But um, I think the other thing is, is instead of trying to cram too much into one graphic, thinking about kind of a sequence of graphics that tell a story that okay. starts simple and, and then build their way up to the, the, the so don't just complex. Throw it don't all just out try and like put every single variable in is one Is there a plot. tendency towards that? Yeah, definitely. Just here's all my stuff, right? And, and, I, and, and, I, and I think people sort of naturally drawn to like colorful, interesting looking plots. Yeah. And often, you know, the more effective graphics are sort of like simpler and don't have so much going on at once. They're not quite so visually interesting, um, but, they're, but they're more effective because there's sort of more focus on the data rather than sort of frippery and Interesting, color. interesting. So you also led a tutorial here at OSCON mm -hmm. about data science and the R programming mm -hmm. environment. Why do you think R is popular with data scientists? So to me, there's like four sets of tools you need to be able to do to do data science. You need some way of kind of getting the data into your whatever analytic system mm -hmm. you're using, and you need to be able to sort of clean it and process it. So often, you know, the data is, is in some Byzantine format, or it's been collected over the course of many years and formats have changed. So you need sort of tools to get the data in and clean it up. And then you'll need tools of like for data manipulation, data transformation, aggregating it, or creating new variables, transforming existing variables. Uh, and then tools for visualization. So visualizations are generally good at helping you see what you didn't expect and helping you kind of make your questions about the data precise. But visual, the, the, the weakness of visualizations is that because they require a person to look at them, they don't scale particularly well. Mm -hmm. So kind of then the, the, the fourth tool, the final tool, is modeling. So once you're, or analytics, once you have a sufficiently precise question, you can solve it with an algorithm or a simple numerical summary, then you can kind of, you can do that, you can scale it much more easily. So I think, so I think R is successful for data scientists because it does a good job of providing tools in all those four areas. Where other platforms are, um, not quite there yet. They've got some. They've got some strengths in some of those areas, but not all of them. Right. So it's not the whole. Not the, the whole. whole thing. Last yeah. question for you. In addition to R, what do you view as the essential data science tools? So I kind of see there's like three languages of data science, which I think are um, Python and JavaScript. Then you have sort of domain-specific or data languages, like if you're working with XPAL, XML, you need to know about XPath. If you're working with uh, relational databases, you need to know SQL. If you're working with you know, Hadoop, you need to know Pig or Scalding mm -hmm. or something. Um, and then I think there's a few other tools that tool builders for data science use, which are things like C or C++, Fortran, Scala. But I think, I mean, I really see if you're a data scientist, I think you really need to master like Python, R, or JavaScript right. and know a little bit about the strengths and weaknesses of each of them. Great, and thanks for joining us. Appreciate you taking the time.